Alright guys, today we're going to be doing a, a Bible study on what I have called the fruit of the Spirit. Um, but first I'd like to begin in a moment of prayer. Uh, let's give ourselves a chance to execute 1 John 1, nine, so that we can be in fellowship with our Lord. May we bow please. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today, Lord, in this very unorthodox manner. But you know as well as we do that the church is not any one particular building, but it is inside of us all. And we thank you for bringing us here together tonight. And we know that, of course, it should be your will that, that we all study your word together. I thank you for giving me this wonderful, wonderful opportunity to, to share what I've learned and I just ask that you help me along the way, Lord, because only you know that I can't do this by myself. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so uh, first, let's turn the Bible to the Bible verse I do not have written down after the verse. So I'll just go ahead and, and say my verse to you guys. You know, I reminded myself to do that. And that is a good I'm just it. So, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, respect against such things. So, now you know what the fruit of the Spirit is. You know the fruit of the Spirit are of the Spirit. You know the fruit of the Spirit. Do you really know the fruit of the Spirit? So, I see some of y'all know what I mean, but uh, I think the most better way to go. Get that up. I want to. No, seriously though, uh, let's take a look where it mentions uh, fertility and fruitfulness. Um, let me start off by saying that throughout our studies, uh, we've learned a lot about this. Uh, we haven't learned about it directly, at least while I've been there, but it's been indirectly. Um, by studying, being in fellowship, and having the mind of Christ. For instance, um, we've learned that the way of Christ is the way to God, to life, to truth, to love, of joy, of peace, unity, prayer, forgiveness, and many other things. Um, I could sit here and just name them off for a while, but uh, that, that, that wouldn't be the point of this study here. Um, there are many others that deserve mention, obviously, uh, but, but that's not the subject today. Um, but now we need to consider the way of Christ is a way of bearing fruit, because without Christ we cannot bear fruit. Um, let's let's start off with uh, three points. Let's start off with point number one. Um, Jesus described bearing fruit as a mark of discipleship. You can find that in John chapter fifteen, verse eight. Point number two. Disciples have been appointed to bear fruit. Um, you can find that in John chapter 15 as well, in verse 16. Now, point three uh, is an important one. A failure to bear fruit results in being taken away and cast aside as a dried branch. These are Jesus' words himself. Um, that'll be in John chapter 15. 1 through 2, and in verse 6 as well. Now, I'd like to concentrate a little bit on, on the third point. Um, as you should know, John 15, 16, a mention of the dried branch being cast aside 
This, of course, does not mean that you're going to be cast out of the royal family or any nonsense like that. Because we've all heard the verse in John chapter 10, verse 28. It says, I give eternal life to them, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. I would just like to point that fact out to you guys. Okay. Um, now, bearing fruit is completely reliant on abiding in Christ. Just as when you look outside and you take a look at your trees and your grass and everything out there, if you notice, those things are reliant on the light of the sun and the water from the rain. Just as we are reliant on the light of Christ and the waters of life. In which he at one point said that they flow freely. They're freely given. Um, as explained by Jesus, we must abide in him as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. That's in John chapter 15, verse 4. Um, I don't have that verse written down here, but it says something along the lines of the tree cannot bear fruit if it is nothing but a branch. The branch cannot bear fruit by itself. If it's just a branch with nothing else, how is it going to bear fruit? Um, abiding in Jesus, we can bear much fruit. Um, but without him, we can do nothing. That's in John chapter 15, verse 5. Acknowledged by Paul, who is a successful fruit bearer, is this same point. He made this point in Philippians 4, verse 13, and 2 Corinthians 3, verse 5. If, if you all would like to, um, I would like to turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, and 2 Corinthians 3, verse 5. I'll give you all a moment to get there. That, once again, is 2 Corinthians 4.13. That's the first one we're going to go to. I see Brian over there at the head with his sword of the Lord with an electronic edge. Alright guys, are we all there? Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Now, is there anyone who thinks that they can tell me what that means? I never mind, guys. I had my uh, e sword highlighted on the wrong verse. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, that would be Philippians 4:13, not Second Corinthians. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, I don't have to ask anybody what that means because I'm sure we all know what that means. It's, it's very evident. Um, but 2 Corinthians is chapter 3, verse 5. I notice I'm getting a couple dirty looks. That's okay. Okay, 2 Corinthians 3 5 says that not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. That goes back to when Jesus talked about us being a branch by ourselves. We can't do anything by ourselves. There's nothing, there's no fruit that we have to bear by ourselves, by our own strength. It all comes from the Word of God that He's given us. Now, the question is is how can we abide in Christ so that we can bear this fruit? Um, and it's a very important question that many people have not addressed. Uh, a lot of mainstream pastors like to tell you how you can bear fruit and how, how fruit is bared, but they don't tell you how to abide in Jesus, which is the main thing that you have to do to be able to bear fruit. 
Now, first, we can put him on, as it is said, by spiritual baptism and accept and accepting his gift by believing on him. You can find those in Galatians 3, verse 27, and John chapter 3, verse 16. Then, by abiding in his love, keeping his commandment of love, we can also abide in Christ. You can find that in John chapter 15, verse 9 through 10, and John chapter 15, 16 through 18. John 15, 16 through 18 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, that you would go and bear fruit, and that your fruit would remain, so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. This is my commandment, that you love one another. Now, Christ gave us that commandment to love one another, and that's a major aspect of bearing fruit. Because as you all know, the Bible tells us that without love, we have nothing. And guys, if, if, we, if, we, don't, if we can't love one another, then that's something that we need to concentrate on uh, first and foremost. Um, to be a full disciple, we have to bear fruit. And to bear fruit, we've got to abide in Christ. To abide in Christ, we have to keep his commandment of love first and foremost. But what kind of fruits will disciples bear? Bearing fruit is manifested in various ways, actually. Let's start off with uh, a couple points here. How we can bear fruit. Let's start off with point A. Winning souls to Christ. Winning souls to Christ. You can go with point one under point A. This is expressed by Paul in his desire to go to Rome. That will be in Romans chapter 1, verse 13. Also, the disciples, creating more disciples, is one way to bear fruit as well. So you going out and preaching the word of God to the unsaved, or even to the saved who truly don't know his word, that, that's another way of bearing fruit. You can find that in Matthew chapter 28, 19 through 20. All right, we can go down to point B. Point B would be sharing with those in need. That can be multiple things. You can, you can give all kinds of things to people. It, it doesn't just have to be money. Um, point one, though, would be, as expressed by Paul, and how he described the contribution to the poor saints. In that case... It would be helping out a poor saint or another believer in Jesus Christ, which is very important. That would be in Romans chapter 15, 25 through 28. This is a problem we have today that shouldn't be going on. If we all had that love that Jesus talked about, that, that love would, would completely overpower the, the sinful nature that we have that, that keeps us from sharing with our brothers and sisters. We should see them as if they were a part of us. They were a physical part of our bodies. Now, we can go on to point two, under B. Um, sharing with those in need is also evidence of God's grace at work in the givers. The believing giver is showing evidence of God's grace by sharing with those in need. You can find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 2, and also chapter 9, 12 through 14. Now, when it says we have the mind of Christ, that would mean that we would reflect what Christ would do. Now, when it says that we would have, that would be evidence of God's grace at work, it would be a reflection of God's grace upon us. We're reflecting that grace upon the people around us. We can go to point C now. 
Point C is developing a Christ-like character. That's another way to bear fruit. Very important way as well. These are all very important ways. Point one under C would be developing a Christ-like character indicates that one is walking in the Spirit. They're advancing. They've been studying. You would see it. People like to say that James and Paul contradict each other, but actually they work together quite well. And a lot of a lot of the books that they wrote, they they point this out. And it's confused in a lot of ways, but in this particular case, um, developing a Christ-like character indicates that someone is walking in the Spirit is pointed out in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, and then verses 22 and 23. Point 2, under C, evidence that one is diligent in growing in the true knowledge of Jesus is a pointer that they're developing a Christ-like character. If you're growing in the true knowledge of Jesus, it's something amazing. As Christ said, it, it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. It's something that gives us joy at all times. You can find that in Second Peter 1, 5-8. through 8. I would say one of the most important things, one of the most important things of bearing fruit is praising God and giving thanks to Him. This is, this is, I can't express how important it is. We were made to worship. God made us to worship. And we either worship things of the world and materialistic items, um, you know, cars, money, women, drugs, how big your house is, stuff like that. Or we can praise God and give thanks to Him for what we do have. Even if we are rich, you, you should still definitely give thanks to God for that. Now, you can find this in Hebrews 13, verse 15. The fruit of our lips and praise and prayer are spiritual sacrifices, which we are to offer continually to God. This is a command by God. He commands us to do this. Like I said, once again, you can find that in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. As we bear fruit in these different ways, we not only glorify God and prove to be fruitful disciples, we also experience part of the abundant life in which Jesus speaks. By having the abundance and fruitfulness, you'll start, it, you'll start to notice your own fruitfulness, everything you're doing for Jesus. And it's absolutely amazing. You can find that in John chapter 10, verse 10, where he talks about it. All right, moving on to another subject. Bearing fruit leads to the fulfilled life. I mean, what more can I say? Everybody wants a fulfilled life. Everybody wants to feel fulfilled. I mean, without fulfillment, I mean, you're, you feel empty. And through Jesus Christ, thanks be to God, we have a purpose and we can feel fulfilled. Winning souls produces joy in us. As Paul found to be the case with the Thessalonians, you can find that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 19 through 20. Paul had absolute joy, absolute joy in winning souls with the Thessalonians. It, I mean, it, it should be an example of what we should do. A prime example. John realized this with his children. 3 John 1 Verse 4. One reason many Christians don't live a life of joy is because they never bear fruit in leading others to Christ, which is one of the most important callings that we all have. We're all to call others to Christ. Christ has a purpose for everyone. Some can't see it. And we believers who can see it because of our spiritual eyes, or as Pastor Roy says, our spiritual antenna is up, we're to call them to come with us. To Christ. Very important. As I mentioned before, sharing with others produces a joy. 
and is bearing the fruit of Christ to others around you and creates a captive audience, which is very important when you want to witness to somebody like I was just talking about. Sharing the Word of God with somebody must be done very tactfully, or you might offend somebody, you might hurt somebody's feelings, and they might just walk away from you disgusted. Because what is this world run by? Satan. Satan absolutely hates God. And if somebody who's never turned to Jesus Christ has been in the world, all they've been getting into their souls their whole life is satanic thought. And it's absolutely going to reject the Word of God. So, we need to make sure that we have a captive audience. Whenever you have a chance to do something for somebody who's in need or something like that, you need to make sure that you realize that that's a captive audience. You have a chance to witness about Jesus Christ to that person. You never know if they've been saved or not. And through your actions, they might see the grace of God. Acts chapter 20, verse 35 says, Those who give are blessed. The word blessed can actually be translated blood in one German translation. It comes from the German word of blechen, meaning blood. I believe you can use this as a reference to the blood of Christ as the gift. We then reflect this through giving. As I said in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, it says those who give are blessed. We who share the story about the blood that was spilled on the cross are blessed. The word blessed can also be translated from the Greek word makarios or as y'all probably heard in our just recent studies, makarion, when Pastor Roy talked about it. That word means happy or joyful. So by us reflecting the gift that Christ gave through his blechen, the German word, or blood, we can be makarios, or happy. Kind of threw a little bit of Dennis and Pastor Roy into that one. So if Christians don't know how to fruitfully give, they'll never know the blessedness of giving. That's giving the Word of God, giving money to someone who may be poor, giving your knowledge or your advice to someone who may be in need of it. Anything. Absolutely anything. Developing a Christ-like character produces assurance in your life. Absolute assurance. You know that you're doing the right thing. There's no doubt about it. There's no questioning yourself. There's no questioning the Word of God. And when the Word of God works inside of you, there's no questioning it at all. Let's start off with another point. Point one. Growing in the true grace and knowledge of Christ ensures an abundant entrance into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord. You can find that in 2 Peter 1, 8-11. Two, developing a Christ-like love gives assurance of one's discipleship and salvation. I'll repeat that for you guys. Developing a Christ-like love gives us assurance. Blessed assurance. Y'all heard that song? I'm sure you have. It gives us blessed assurance of our discipleship and our salvation through Jesus Christ. You can find that in John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. You can also find it in 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, and then verses 18 through 19. Many Christians have no assurance, none at all, and wonder why their character remains unchanged. That's evidenced by little love for their brothers and for Christ himself. And it goes back to when James... Is talking about showing his works, showing his faith through his works. If you truly have the mind of Christ, truly have it, it'll show through your actions. You don't have to try, it'll show through your actions. And like I said, for some Christians who have no assurance and wonder why their character remains unchanged, in other words, they don't have the mind of Christ. It's evidenced by a little love for their brothers and for Christ himself. You can see that in their actions. 
if they haven't really discovered that love that Christ was talking about, they're not being fruitful. See, praising God and giving thanks produces peace and a joy in your life. And it's something that we must remember to do in this world where everything is, is trying to put us down, everything is trying to drag us back, our sinful natures, evil thinking, this cosmic system, everything is just trying to pull us back from what God really wants us to do. And it's hard sometimes, but we have to trust. Prayer is most important. Prayer. Remain steadfast in prayer. Prayer is the antidote. You can find those words in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. For in response to prayer, God, God will guard our hearts through His peace. That's why it's an antidote. Because He guards our hearts. God, guarding your heart because He loves you so much through His peace. That can be found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Failing to bear much fruit in regards to prayer, Christians are going to be filled with anxious lives, forgetting to pray and not abundantly living as, they, as Christ wants them to. And I'm not talking about material blessings, guys, in abundance. I'm not talking about an abundance of wealth or an abundance of women or an abundance of whatever your flesh desires. I'm talking about an abundance of the Spirit, of the fruit of the Spirit. That's, that's what I'm talking about here. The way of bearing fruit is essential to the way of Christ. For bearing fruit is necessary for one, to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. It is absolutely essential. Two, to be a filled disciple. If you desire to truly follow the way of Christ, you must one, abide in Him and keep His commandment of love. Two, keep a short account with God through confession by executing what 1 John 1 9 says. And three, produce the fruits that glorify our Father. We must always, always concentrate on glorifying God. It's never about ourselves, ever. It's always about God. At all times, no matter what situation you're in, you need to think, how can I glorify God in this situation? No matter what the situation is, how can you glorify God? In John chapter 15, verse 8, Jesus said, By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. That's one of the most powerful verses you can read right there. God is glorified by you bearing fruit. That's a way of glorifying Him, like I just said. Producing these fruits that glorify God. When you bear that fruit, you're glorifying God. And you're showing through your actions that you're a disciple of Christ. And that's very important in all aspects of life. If anyone sees this, and you're not yet a disciple of Christ, I would like to let his own words lead you to become one. Take a look at Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. That's Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. Once again, guys, producing fruit is very necessary for us to be successful in our Christian living. It glorifies God. It brings Christ to others. It brings us peace. It fulfills us. It does so much for us. Being fruitful is everything about being a Christian. A Christian was made to be fruitful in all those ways. And we need to remember to do that every day. May we please bow for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful study. Thank you for your wonderful grace, your wonderful blessings. 
your wonderful knowledge that you bestow upon us all. That we may go out and bear fruit, we may bear your fruit to the world and make disciples among all the nations like you told us to. And we want to thank you for every blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. That was fun. Uh, it's 12, 10.